In the last 30 years, 56 countries have reported unprovoked shark attacks. Out of the top six, Australia is the second highest, reporting less than one incident per year. However, this has been reported to be on the rise. Since 1938, Queensland's population has increased from 1 million to a projected 4.8 million expected by the end of June 2018. The increase in population growth and the subsequent rise in beachgoers means more water activities resulting in a likelihood of human and shark encounters occurring. We're creating an awareness and potentially a false awareness. Most people didn't even know what shark nets were. So when we talked about what constitutes a shark net, for instance, off the Sunshine Coast here, they thought they went all the way to the bottom of the ocean and went for a greater distance than they actually do. The results of a public poll conducted in 2015 show strong opposition for the current shark management strategies in Western Australia. With this in mind, we approach the public of the Sunshine Coast to seek their personal opinions on Queensland's current shark control program. Depends on where the shark incident is, but you do have to respond to them. But luckily on the coast there hasn't been uh, uh, an incident like that that's required anyone to go out there. So. I'm a local, I live here. Uh, the shark deterrent methods are drumline and uh, nets, I believe. Uh, I think they're quite effective and um, I have no problem with them. I don't disagree with them. Uh, I feel they're being effective here because there doesn't seem to be any uh, bad attacks. Between 1919 and 1961, there were 62 fatal shark attacks in Queensland. In an attempt to reduce attacks, Queensland introduced the current shark control program in 1962. Both nets and drum lines are used extensively along the Sunshine Coast, predominantly at patrolled beaches. They are located parallel to the shoreline at approximately 600 metres offshore at depths of between 6 to 12 metres. Shark nets are constructed from three 62 metre panels attached to one another, each with a 6 metre drop which are attached to floats at the surface and weighed down with lead weights at 2 metre intervals, irrespective of the water depth. Therefore, in deeper water, marine life can swim both around or under them. Drum lines consist of a single hook attached to a 2 metre length chain suspended from a buoy. The depth of the hook can be adjusted according to local conditions, but at least 2 metres from the seabed at low tide. Fresh sea mullet or shark flesh are used as bait attached to the hooks. Both nets and drum lines are checked every 15 to 20 days per month with weather permitting. We just have to remember that these, these measures were designed in the 40s and 50s. They're archaic, they're, they're old technologies, and their intent is to kill animals. And... During the 2014 cull off Western Australia, a marine monitored area one kilometre offshore was established where drum lines were deployed along the perimeter. The private fishing companies who patrolled the area were authorised to shoot any sharks over three metres in length from the drum lines or spotted in the area. The bodies were then disposed of further out in sea. Three potentially dangerous to human shark species were targeted. The tiger shark, the bull shark and the great white. The duration of this cull was three months. In a 1998 CSIRO publication, the amount of rare, vulnerable and endangered marine life caught in shark control devices was described as minor, with having limited effects on mortality. However, data collated from Queensland shark control programs suggest otherwise. Studies have also shown the impacts on marine species, especially long-lived marine life, with low reproduction rates has detrimental effects on the biodiversity of the marine ecosystems. The Sunshine Coast is a known migratory route for the vulnerable humpback whale, with 2017 being the worst year on record for whales caught in nets. 
and those drum lines, I believe, are checked every two days, if that. If there's bad weather, inclement weather, then that could be longer. Um, it's definitely not every day. Like that's their backyard. Like we are, we are guests in their natural habitat, and, and as a surfer, we've, we've acknowledged that. The fact that our population is growing and the fact that we're now overfishing their food source, them as an apex predator, then have to go to the next thing. And I personally believe that's why we're seeing a lot of, you know, regular shark attacks now compared to what we did. Because currently, any shark that's caught in Queensland waters is, is very likely to die. So yeah. um, being able to have a method that can catch them and they possibly, we're not saying even if you put in smart drum lines, whether they'll be released successfully or not, but having that ability to be able to monitor and release those sharks, that would be a huge outcome. Benefits that sharks play for our environment, that's something that you don't hear very often. If we consider the ocean as an ecosystem and a healthy lifeline for a society to provide food, to provide oxygen, and all the other services that a healthy ocean provides to you and me, uh, these things are being compromised by killing off an apex predator in the water. And we have a huge responsibility to protect them, especially the critical species that may not be around in the near future. So for a take-home message to tourists, I'd just say, like, read the lifeguard board if they've put out that there was a shark sighting or even jump on Facebook as like the um, public shark sighting app uh, yep. page. You can see if sharks have been you know, sighted in that area. Minor changes that can be made include changing the style of drumline hooks to minimise bycatch. Having signs situated at the entrance of beaches to raise awareness similar to those used in far north Queensland for crocodiles. Adding acoustic alarms to existing nets as trialled in New South Wales. Or having surfers using wetsuits such as the elude option which is designed to camouflage and the diverter design which is to appear as a predator such as an orca. Repellents which use the odour of dead sharks as a deterrent or finally, a magnetic wristband. Major change alternatives can include shark barriers going from magnetic to plastic barriers, an increase in shark spotter programs, including the sonar technology of Smart Boys. In Western Australia, after the 2014 shark call, a poll on the public's opinion on alternative methods showed the most strongly supported options were more public education and that beachgoers are taking ownership of their own safety. What they do serve to do, from what we can understand, is offer a perception of safety to people entering the water. And I think um, a greater understanding might result in um, more informed opinions about whether or not we need these types of controls or if there are better options available. Honest opinion, there needs to be some form of barrier put in. Do I think the nets and the drums are appropriate? No, I think there could be something um, developed that would be a lot more sustainable to the ecosystem. You've gone into the water um, knowing those risks. Yeah. And so I think a, a public education and a signage campaign would be really effective. But what we really need to get away from is lethal versus non-lethal methods. Lethal methods were designed in the 40s and 50s when they were first put in. That's all we had at the time. And that's what they're designed to do, is to kill things, to remove animals from the water indiscriminately. We can do better than that. It's 2018. Open up a conversation with your friends and your family around the current methods of shark control. What do you think it's really controlling?